Okay, so the, uh, let's start continuous random variables and I uh, start with uh, a PDF or probability density function. So let's start with uh, an example. Let's say we have the data on height of all male Americans. Range, uh, well, let's throw away some small and large numbers. Uh, in range uh, 100 centimeters to 200. And uh, 180 is in fact uh, 6 feet. So 200 is like 6 something, not even 7. So uh, it makes sense to just throw away above 7 and below something. And uh, you draw the histogram, and uh, if you choose each sub interval to be 1 centimeter, you will get something like this. Yeah. But if you choose the sub-intervals to be 0 0.01 or one-tenth of a millimeter, then uh, you will get very small sub-intervals. But uh, when you, if you can do that, and if there is a, which there is in fact, if you can do that, you will see that the uh, histogram looks like uh, continuous. It looks like a curve. I mean, if you look at the top of these, it looks like a curve. And before continuing, I'm taking relative frequency here, not frequency itself. So each one of them, the height is a number between 0 and 1. Now, if I want to find the probability that uh, a randomly chosen male American, uh, American's height is between 160 and 180, so that is in fact my x, the uh, random variable, right? Randomly chosen American male. Uh, has height between 160 and 180, uh, what I do is just uh, add these numbers, add these uh, frequencies, and that is uh, the probability that this person, a randomly chosen person, has height between these two numbers. The same is here. Well, what are these? When I add these, these numbers, it is what? It is like a, this frequency times 1, this frequency times 1, this frequency times 1. Or in other words, I am finding the area under this histogram from 160 to 180. The same thing happens here. I am finding area under this histogram from 160 to 180. So I am talking about area under uh, a, graph of, a graph, under a graph. But what is area under a graph? Area under a graph, if I have a continuous function and that's graph of a continuous function, that is definite integral. That's, uh, let's put that aside, but uh, now if, if I make this even smaller, well, it doesn't make sense because I chose uh, two points, uh, two decimal points, so it doesn't make sense to make it that larger. Uh, so, in fact, I can't do that because that's uh, the uh, that's how I have measured that. So, but anyway, so if I can come up with an approximate an approximation to this histogram, or let's say if I can come up with a function f x whose graph approximates this histogram, especially this one, which uh, the intervals are so small, one tenth of a millimeter is like the thickness of a uh, a blade or something. So this really looks like a curve. If I can come up with a function that really, really approximates this uh, well enough, then uh, what I'm doing is basically finding the area under the graph of this function, and that's the integral of this function uh, from 160 to 180. But what is this function? This is in fact what we call a PDF. This guy here is uh, what we call a PDF, or probability density function. And you can see this, uh, in a sense, is giving me the density. Density, like here it says the density of uh, people, because this is relative frequency. So it is giving me the density of people between 160 and 161 is this. Okay, so if I multiply it by this one, I will get the, the total number. Something like that. So, <laughs> okay, so then the, that's where the, the probability density function, uh, uh, what, what, what do we say? Okay, so if I can find that this function 
if I can find this function, then I'm good. I and and look at this. I have data that my data points are huge. That's assuming that say we have 150 million male in this country. That 150 million numbers. That's a lot. So <laughs> that, so you can. Yeah, I mean, easily, or how should I say that? Uh, you can assume that you are really not dealing with a discrete uh, uh, random variable. You are dealing with a continuous random variable. You can assume that between any uh, uh, two numbers here, you have infinitely many uh, choices or numbers. So we can assume that. But because any number falls here. But you might say, no, no, wait, wait, wait a minute. Uh, no measurement can measure uh, any number between say 160 and 161, right? You can just go uh, 10 million decimal points, but still that is not every number. You're, uh, you're right, in fact. Uh, that goes way deeper into higher level uh, theory of probability. But uh, let's assume we can do that. <laughs> so, this fx, which in a sense in, is in fact like a continuous histogram, uh, is what we will be dealing with for continuous random variables. And the area under that fx or the pdf in fact gives me uh, probability. Uh, remember, for discrete random variables, we had the uh, pmf, and uh, that itself, that function gave me. Uh, probability, but this one is area under this that uh, gives me probability. Okay, now what happens in practice is that, well, in fact, there is an area of statistics that really finds this approximation. In a sense, they find this approximation. Uh, but let's uh, not go that far and uh, just say, okay, what we do. And it's maybe the easiest way to do is to say, okay, to model this. To say, okay, uh, the, the, you graph this histogram, just look at the histogram and come up with uh, a cooked up model. Or models will just go uh, online and check the models, and or you have a book of models or something and just pick one of them. For example, with this one, you might pick something. I don't know, like a random, uh, like a normal distribution, or something like I don't know, some uh, some uh, distribution. So you pick a model, and uh, you fit that model to your data. That's what really happens in many uh, areas of data science. In fact, you just uh, you, in a sense, you are fitting some kind of. Uh, normal distribution. It, that normal distribution is in the background. Some people don't know what they are doing, but uh, that's in the background. They don't see that. <laughs> but in fact, that, that's what they are doing. So uh, you pick, say, for example, some kind of normal distribution and fit it to your data, and then that's it. So then you use that, uh, uh, say, formula or the, for normal distribution or calculator or something and find uh, what you want as in terms of probability of uh, your random variable being between certain numbers. So, so this fx, let's look at this fx. What are the properties of this, uh, this function? First of all, this function is non-negative. It can be zero, that's okay, because you might have nothing between 10, 100 and 110, for example. So, it might be zero, that's, uh, but it's never negative. You don't have a negative uh, number of people between these two numbers. Second, the, the area under the scale is 1. You see, this is relative frequency, so the whole thing should be 1. Uh, so, and that's it. These are the two, uh, uh, say, properties of uh, PDF. So let me... So we say that x, so x is my random variable, or v, and we say that x is uh, uh, follows a certain distribution with 
uh, some parameters theta. So this is in fact the parameters. distribution comes with certain parameters like uh, remember we had for Poisson for example we had lambda which was in fact the, the average and uh, what was our for binomial for example we had n and p and so on so these are uh, parameter or parameter so it can be more than one uh, and distribution is the name for example we had Poisson we had like binomial we had Bernoulli and so on and let's assume that this is continuous, so it's continuous. It comes with two uh, functions. One is the PDF. A density function. Fx. Usually, well, we can call it anything. And the other one is CDF. If everything is uh, continuous enough, if everything is continuous enough, we will see that this uh, small fx is the derivative of this. If everything is nice and continuous, uh, not in general, but we will see that uh, when I go through this, I will show. Now let's uh, uh, let's start with the uh, PDF. Now, you might have seen on your, on your calculator or in the different places that uh, your calculator, I guess it has something like normal PDF, normal CDF. That's in fact the PDF of normal distribution and the CDF of normal distribution. So let's see. Uh, let me uh, erase this and uh, the PDF, if the PDF is x, fx sign, PDF fx. Has the following properties. Uh, one, fx is a number bigger than or equal to zero. Two, the integral from minus infinity to infinity of fx is one. So it, it is something like this. Uh, and uh, minus infinity, infinity, and uh, the area is under this area is one. And uh, if x follows this distribution, then uh, we can find probability that x is between certain two uh, two numbers. Say, let me erase this and. Uh, So, probably that x is less than small x is in fact an uh, integral. Oh, gee, I forgot the dx here. No, maybe x, but that's okay. So, this is in fact uh, from negative infinity to x. Well, let's write it ft so it doesn't get mixed up with this. That's double value, but that's okay. So that is this one and p of x between say a and b is integral from a to b uh, f t dt. Okay. So Uh, so this is so if this is point x this is probability that this is less than x and
Okay. Uh, so, some people like that. They say, yeah, probability is in fact the area under a curve. So, we have found an interesting application of or, uh, integral. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, so yeah, that's good. <laughs> so, <laughs> that is uh, in fact definition of uh, PDF, of what the PDF is. Well, in higher level mathematics, say, the theory of probability, that is defined in a different way. In fact, we naturally can define CDF, then PDF uh, sometimes exists, sometimes it doesn't exist, and uh, uh, that comes from the CDF, in fact. The CDF, in fact, is defined first. But uh, anyway, the, this is just a basic, very basic probability. So, okay. Let's look at some interesting and simple uh, distributions. So the first distribution is uh, one of the most important ones, and uh, that is a uh, uh, uniform distribution. Okay, so uniform distribution on A and B. So what is uniform distribution in general? Uniform distribution is uh, Suppose you have uh, a certain number of uh, numbers, or certain number of objects, and uh, you just pick one at random. So you have uh, like uh, 35 students in a class, and you just close your eyes and pick one at random. That's like each one of them, if you have 35 students in class, 35 students, then if you pick one at random, uh, the probability that you pick any one of them is 1 over 35, right? So the probability of picking any one of them is uh, the same. So we say that this is like uniform distribution on 35 objects or something like that. So uniform distribution on a discrete form of uniform distribution is very simple. If you have n objects, when you have n objects, the uniform distribution is that each one of them has probability of 1 over n to be picked up or to be chosen. So that's uniform distribution. Now what does it mean here when we have a and b? You can say, okay, it's like uh, we divide this into um, billions and billions of uh, points and then each one has, a, uh, say, a probability of one over billions, billions uh, chance to be selected. But uh, still, if you divide this into billions and billions, you are not covering everything. So you have somewhat to cover everything. So if you cover everything, every point here, then the probability of picking any one of them is zero. Right? So if I divide this by 1,000 points, then the probability of picking each one is one over 1,000. If I divide it by 10 to the power 100, you know, this is huge. That is 100 zeros. Then the probability of choosing one of them is 10, 1 over this. That's uh, 0.00, 1 and 100 zeros. That's a lot. A lot of zeros here. That's almost zero. So just assume that you just divide it more and more and more and more, 10 to the power. Uh, say 10 to the power 10, something like that, who knows? <laughs> and uh, so that is uh, dividing one by that number, you just get zero. So if I say, uh, if I have a continuous, say this is a continuum, if I assume this is happening, then the probability of picking a point here is zero. That's amazing. Where the probability of picking a point is zero. Now, I will show you when, uh, by uh, say, uh, the, remember uh, the, the integral, if I had the PDF here, so that was like PDF, okay? PDF. And I said probability of x 
being between A and B. So what the probability that X is between A and A? So if that is X is A in fact. Right? That's X being A. So that's integral from A to A, from A to A, Fx dx, and this is zero. Area under that curve is uh, from A to A itself is zero. Not one, because this is just a, a line segment, and that doesn't have area. So that is an amazing property of continuous and co I mean continuous, not mixed or anything. Just continuous. If the uh, PDF is a continuous function. Then this happens. Probability of x being a is zero. Now there are tricks to assign something to a, some probability, uh, and you can just go a little bit to the right or left and uh, just small amount and then find probability of uh, that a. But anyway, it's technically and mathematically zero. So probability of choosing a point here is zero. So what should we do here? Like over there, when I said probability of x being between a and b, that's what I should do here. So, uh, well, let's call it something else. So, pro probability of x being between x1 and x2. So, that's what I have to know. So, it means that uh, if I pick a number at random or pick a point at random from this interval, what is the probability that this random point falls in this interval. Okay, so it is defined in this way. A P of a random point falls in this interval x1 comma x2 equals equals the length of this x2 minus x1 divided by b minus a. So if this happens, if this happens that is the, this length divided by this length, it makes sense, just think. Just focus and think. The probability of a point falling within this uh, uh, interval is in fact how big this, in, it's related to how big that interval is, right? If you just put your finger, boom, if this interval is so small, then you <laughs> never hit that, right? Not never, but you don't hit that all the time. But if, if it is so big, then boom, you <laughs> hit it. So, it has to do with the length of this integral. And this is the length, x2 minus x1, divided by b minus a. So, if that is the probability, you will see it easily that the PDF for this thing will be uh, uh, this. So the PDF will be uh, zero everywhere except over this interval. You see this and uh, how much should this be? Well this is some constant k, but I said area under the curve should be one. Area under this curve should be one. So if this is fx and it is a constant c, k, this is a constant k. What is k? So what is k? k is area k from a to b dx should be one. So that gives me k times. Uh, b minus a should be 1, and that gives me k should be 1 over b minus a. Okay, so the uniform distribution is this. Let me uh, erase it and say x is uniform. Interval A B, then then it's PDF 
is f of x is 1 over b minus a when x is between a and b and 0 otherwise. 0 otherwise. So that is the simplest and one of the most important ones, uh, which happens, I mean, it's so natural. Whenever you talk about picking a number some, somehow, you are, you are right thinking of this. Or picking uh, somebody from uh, like a group of people, say, you are thinking like this. Unless you are biased, yeah. So assuming that you are not biased, in fact, you, what you are doing is uniform. <sighs> okay. So. This is uniform distribution, and uh, in fact, uh, using this, so this k is 1 over b minus a. So what is probability that my random variable is between x1 and x2? Well, by definition, it should be from x1 to x2 fx dx so that's from x1 to x2 1 over b minus a dx so that is 1 over b minus a x from x1 to x2 which is x2 minus x1 b minus a which I in fact started with this I started with this and uh, that's how I came up uh, this uh, amazingly nice uh, distribution. Okay. So, that is the first, and uh, as I said, the most important one. Uh, in fact, if uh, the, the uniform on zero, one is uh, crucial in many reasons, uh, for many reasons. So x uniform on zero one has f x for this one and basically one, right? One minus zero is one. If x is between zero and one, and zero otherwise. So you will see. Uh, I don't know if I have time or if uh, to uh, uh, tell you how you can find say random numbers uh, from certain distributions. In fact, you first find a random number using this distribution and somehow related to other distributions. And specifically, the normal, normal distribution is just amazingly related to this when it comes to choosing a random number uh, from a normal distribution. Okay, so. Let's look at another one, another distribution that's also important. And uh, so this distribution is used, uh, as I said, naturally should come into mind. Uh, most uh, sometimes when you do Bayesian stats, or the, then you choose this as the, at the beginning, like the prior distribution, and then using this as a prior, you find posterior distribution for certain things. Uh, this is the simplest one. So, another one is this. Another example of saying, uh, let's look at uh, something like this uh, light bulb here. And the uh, age, how should I say that? How, how long it lasts, say. So if x is the number of hours that it lasts, then that's a random variable. And this random variable can be zero, just you turn it on and say, boom, nice. Or it can last for hours and hours or even days or who knows. Usually they write on the box that this is like uh, forever, for example. Well, forever, I don't think that makes too much sense. Uh, but uh, anyways, uh, let's assume that uh, you have one of those old bulbs that you know that at some point it turns uh, and just dies. So, 
as time goes on and on, uh, you know that uh, it's getting kind of old. Well, you can, uh, well, let's say the age of human, uh, age of age of us, age of me, age of any human being. Uh, that also is like that. So at some point, everybody dies, right? So, uh, and the probability of dying at older age is larger, right? <laughs> so, uh, we need some kind of a distribution. So if I uh, draw a, a histogram of people who are still alive, say, not, not dead, alive, if I go from 0 to, I don't know, 100, say, the histogram should look like this, right? So I have uh, larger here, then smaller here, and uh, here, around 100, they are very small. So you get something like this, some kind of uh, Fx that looks like this. Uh, your fx looks like this. What is the the, the best uh, uh, function that approximates such a thing, such a curve? Well, the best I guess is something like this: a e to the power uh, minus k t. This is t. So usually you are dealing with time, right? Hundred years that's time. So let's take the the x-axis to be t. So fx equals a e to the power k t. So let's uh, let's see if uh, uh, what a should be. If I say this is my PDF, and I don't know what a is, but I know that this function is never even zero. E to the power anything is not zero, right? So uh, this is never zero. So it's always positive, not even zero. Always positive, not even zero. If a is positive, well, let's assume that a is positive. So I need what? I need this a. I need a. Uh, so what was the, the two properties? Property number one was that fx should be bigger than zero, or equal, which is okay. Property number two is that uh, from negative infinity to positive infinity, fx dx should be one. So uh, I'm assuming that k is given, k is given, so k is given, so you, uh, when, when, for, uh, say large k for example, then it uh, goes down so fast. If k is like 10, minus 10 of t, it goes down. And then it's never zero, but it just goes down quickly. But if k is 0 0.0001, then it starts like this, go like that. Uh, I, you can graph uh, so for the different k's and see for yourself what uh, this looks like. So uh, let's say that k is a uh, uh, say positive. That's why I put negative here. Negative here. So let's see. So I need this a e to the power minus k x d uh, that's okay k t so k, t, d, t, could be 1. Well, the a comes out, and uh, this is uh, minus 1 over k, e to the power minus k, t, from 0, uh, minus infinity. In fact, you can start at 0 to infinity. So you can assume that it is uh, because of age, or how long you live, is 0. So let's assume that it's 0 here. So assuming that this fx is 0 for x less than equal to 1, less than 0, less than 0, okay. Since it's continuous, well, let's assume that it is less than 0. So, uh, so I have a um, minus 1 over k, e to the power minus infinity, minus e to the power 0, right? And this should be 1 e to the power minus infinity is 0, minus minus is plus, so I have, and this is 1, 1 over k is 1, so a is in fact k. Great, so a is k. Okay, so my distribution, this uh, interesting distribution, uh, uh, has this formula.
So let's say x uh, is exp. Well, I can write k here, but you will see that I will write lambda for this. Uh, exp k if uh, fx it looks like this. K e to the power minus k t, where t will be greater than zero and uh, zero uh, otherwise. That's called exponential distribution. Distribution with parameter k. Okay, so that's exponential distribution with parameter k. And as I said, it is used for, say, how long something lasts. Uh, as, uh, like I said, like in human age, for example, or how much longer I live, or the, the probability that I live up to, say, 100 years, say. Okay, so uh, insurance companies use this one extensively uh, to model, uh, in fact, when they're selling life insurance, for example, they use that. The actuaries use uh, uh, something like this. Okay. So, that was the second one that we, uh, we started here. And uh, I I would rather stop here because then I should define the CDF for you and continue with uh, certain other uh, distributions like uh, uh, the most important one is normal distribution. And then we have uh, other ones, the gamma distribution, beta distribution and uh, other, other ones and uh, chi for example, chi squared and so on. Uh, and then define the expected value and variance of uh, continuous distribution. But you realize that this distribution has a lot to do with the PDF and not PDF, we will see it is in fact the CDF. The priority comes from the CDF, not the PDF. Uh, uh, but uh, unlike the discrete, which was uh, uh, the PMF, which gave you almost everything, you didn't really need the CDF. Okay, so let me stop and uh, continue next time and start with the CDF. Okay, see you.